Hi, Rachel. Welcome to the Integrative Health Coach Success Podcast. Hi, Julia. Thank you for having me. I'm so happy to be here. Yes, thanks for coming in. We're happy to have you. I think you uh, have lots of information that our female listeners especially will uh, love to get your input on, and I can't wait to dive in. Uh, let's kind of first start by you sharing a little bit about what you're currently doing, and then we'll talk about how you're planning to incorporate um, your recent IHP2 certification in with that, and um, we'll go from there. Yeah, so I currently have my own skincare studio in Hacker Heights in Texas. I focus on um, a lot of skin correcting anti-aging treatments. Um, I'll do a lot of uh, stress reduction, um, deep like massage. I do a lot of Indian head massage. So I focus a lot on um, de-stressing my client um, because in today's world, you know, it's a crazy environment right now. I love to have a space where women can come and get away from day-to-day hustle, just come and be in a place of just relaxation, talking about them, um, a lot, a lot about their skin. I take care of women who have like anti-aging concerns, pre and post pregnancy, um, things that may arise on their skin. I take care of a lot of hormonal acne and a lot of teens as well I see or women who have come off the pill and their skin has just gone crazy because of that happening. Yeah, so that's basically all that I'm doing at the moment and I just qualified as an integrative health practitioner. So I'm going to start incorporating the um, health coaching into it because I see a huge gap for that in, in this industry. Yes. Yeah. I couldn't agree more. I think that's such a good observation and good for you for seeing the gap and doing something about it. Right. Because of course, you know, stress is probably the root, right. Of most hormonal issues sometimes got complained to it. But when we talk about stress plaguing our systems for women, especially it's usually what makes hormones go haywire. And then the hormones are what Mm -hmm. cause a lot of the skin issues and you being able to incorporate labs or supplements for your clients, you're able to work on the inside and work on the outside. Absolutely. Yes. Yeah. And so I'm curious a little bit about, let's talk about the stress because it seems like that is probably a huge correlation and something that you're um, kind of an expert in as far as what you're doing with your clients right now. So how do you typically address the topic of stress with your clients? And sounds like you obviously make that time that they're in your studio really Mm -hmm. uh, beneficial for bringing down their stress levels. But then you discuss like what happens when they leave and those kinds of things. Yeah, absolutely. So you you see the stress on people when they walk in the door. It's always they were in a rush to get there. They got there and their kid was upsetting them that day or work is crazy or there's so like even internal stress, you can see it on the skin. It looks like dull and lacking energy. So I come in and I just talk to them. I give them a consultation. I, I talk to them a little bit about what their main concerns are and what they would like to address on their skin in particular. Most of the time they'll tell me that they want to address like their acne or redness or something, but then I get them on the bed and I make sure I let them know that, okay, I come up with a treatment plan and I talk to them and say, so today is about you. Um, I also, even though we're doing some sort of correcting skin treatment today, I also want to incorporate some massage. So one of my favorite facials that I do is um, an hour long of um, massage Plus I add a little bit of correction. So I do a lot of um, very gentle correcting treatments. I believe in taking care of the barrier of the skin. I don't like to strip the natural oils of the skin. So I do a lot of enzymes Mm -hmm. and enzymes are one of the best ways that just gently smooth away some of the dead skin cells. Then I'll go into a really nice relaxing massage and I try to get my clients to just completely switch off, not talk to them. And I concentrate on like deep breathing and I use essential oils. I use a lot of hot towels. Then I would always recommend the red light. So at the end of every single treatment, there's a red light therapy treatment that I use. Um, This gives the skin cells energy. It helps to um, induce Uh, helps to like heal. So even if someone had some sort of pain like arthritis or um, 
the, the barrier is impaired, it will help to heal the barrier. And it also helps to hydrate the skin a lot. And also super therapeutic for the client as they're lying there underneath the client, uh, underneath the light. So when the light's on them, I'll also do a really beautiful arm and hand massage. Um, sometimes I do like a stretch of the body, like yoga kind of moves on the body. And then I'll work my way back up to the head and stretch out the, the back of the head. And I was trained to do Indian head massage. So I always do Indian head massage. And that's one thing that my clients say, oh my God, that like, just even that, just, just the head massage alone is like, wow, when can I sign back up for another facial? Like, and I think this is a huge, a huge uh, aspect of, of skincare too. Um, we need to find that time to just stop and breathe and relax and calm our whole body down. Because as you said, this plays havoc on our hormones. Um, we're already have so much stress going on in our body and our hormones are out of whack because we don't have the right nutrition. And then on top of that, the stress comes in. So yeah, I like to give them a space that they're just finding ways and how they relax. And if they are struggling with stress and they never find time, I'll recommend things like, do you get time to go for a walk? Do you get time to just literally have 10 minutes, leave the kids with hubby, go outside, go for a walk, put, put a podcast on. I give them little tips and things that they forget about that we all forget about to do just to go and watch a sunset or, you know, things like that. Yeah, I couldn't agree more. And I think sometimes it's not until we're in a place like it sounds like the environment that you create, which I'm thinking to myself, oh my God, can I get to Texas? <laughs> it sounds amazing. Um, but we almost, I think as women, especially if we're busy career working moms or if we're kind of being pulled in a hundred different directions, we forget what it actually feels like to be relaxed. We're used mm -hmm. to just feeling always revved. And if you lie on an esthetician's table and they're doing a head massage, you actually can feel, oh, wow, actually, this is what it's like for my body to feel calm, to feel at peace, to feel like I'm doing something. And then that might give them a little bit of the motivation to go, yeah, I need to do something to bring me closer to this place instead of always running at that higher frequency. Absolutely. And I always make sure that I rebook my client before they leave the room because, <clears throat> excuse me, it's um, something that we will always not do. We never put ourselves first as moms. We'll, when we put it at the end, like I do it myself sometimes when I go to get my hair done, I make sure that I rebook that appointment because we don't do it. We never get around to the time of going, Oh, actually I think I should book myself in. We just don't do it. So I make sure that my client says, Oh, I'm taking time out for myself. Usually every four weeks, rebook on my clients, send them reminders and they can't wait. They look forward to coming for a treatment and they're getting all the great benefits of skin, um, glow, their glowing skin and, you know, as well as the de-stressing de kind of like going for a massage. You know, I was trained in massage. I used to be a massage therapist. So, um, I kind of know a lot about how to calm the body and how to detox the skin and things like that. So yeah, just making sure, trying to give them a really great place to go to just to calm, calm, calm. <laughs> yes. Yeah. And in my opinion, it's the best of both worlds. Cause if you get a massage, you leave and there's no necessarily like outward benefit. If you do something like you, you know, you're doing, you get the benefit of, you know, the ex external yes. improvements to your skin, but then also getting all of like the internal benefits of, you know, the relaxation and whatnot. So it's honestly the best of both worlds, if you ask me. <laughs> yes, I know. I wish I could get on my own bed, honestly. <laughs> I'm sure you do. Uh, so tell me a little bit about as far as, you know, incorporating supplements um, for de-stressing or supplements for skin. Do you do a little bit of that now? What are some of your favorites? How do you kind of approach uh, that app angle? Um, so anybody that will be listening to this that comes into my salon will know that they have always, always been recommended Omega-3. So Omega-3 is probably one of my 100% go-to supplements for skin health. Not only does it help with the skin, but it helps with hormones and cardiovascular. It helps to lower inflammation in the body. So when you think about the layer of our skin, it's made up of water and oil. And especially in Texas, when we go outside, the environment just will evaporate. The water will evaporate from our skin, from the environment. So it's important to have the fatty acids. It's in the name. They're essential fatty acids in our skin to lock the moisture in. 
So we can drink water all day, which is amazing, as much water as you possibly can. But it's so, so important to lock that water in um, with the essential fatty acids. I also love zinc and especially zinc picolante, if I'm saying that correctly. Mm-hmm. Um, I love that because it's easily, easily absorbed um, and it's a really great supplement for anyone suffering with acne. Um, recently I've been recommending because I've done three detoxes now and the results from the detox are just outstanding. I, I can't, like I changed my life. The detox is what really, really gave me that wow factor of, wow, I feel so energetic. Even myself, like I'm, I'm a health coach, but I'm also still always working on me, trying to give myself more energy and, um, improve all sorts of different uh things for me in my own personal life but the detox was definitely something that um i see in clearer skin like i my skin was tighter it was more hydrated when you think about it if you don't cleanse your liver and your liver is not working correctly the skin will then become the excretory organ. So you'll start to see things on the skin like um, breakouts, for example, um, all of the bad toxins come out. And, and I always say this to my clients, our skin is so, so, so clever. I love, love, and I could talk about the skin forever. Um, it is the window to what's going on inside. It tells us a story. It tells us exactly what's going on inside our body. So we need to always pay attention to it and anything that arises on it, it's always something that's coming from inside the body. Um, 90%. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's uh, yeah. Again, I think it's so important to re, you know reiterate that yes, the liver is what's going to remove toxins. It's what's going to mm-hmm. remove waste. It's cleaning your blood. And like you said, if it's not working properly, well then that stuff just recirculates and mm-hmm. what is what's left to funnel it. Your, your skin. Exactly. Um, your skin. Yeah. Come there. And yeah. then the liver obviously plays into hormones too. I mean, we yes. you know, turn T4 into T3 in the liver. And all there's so many processes that hormonally rely on the liver that um, it absolutely, and I think also too, just the detox, uh, the food choices, right? People are naturally oh, yes. eating more vegetables and they're hydrating more and they're getting all those good vitamins and minerals from the DNS. And so it can, um, it, it is, I, I always notice a difference in my skin when I do it. It's, uh, uh, yeah, it's pretty amazing. Absolutely. Absolutely. I'll be doing it for the rest of my life every three months. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. Yeah. And do your um, clients, did they notice and kind of appreciate the difference of all that internal stuff as well? Yes, I, I honestly, I do from some clients get the shock factor as I'm talking and doing my skin analysis on them. And I talk about their diet and they just give me the back, like they look at me and they're like diet. And, and, and like some of them are quite shocked that, yeah, didn't you know, like whatever you eat is so, so important. Um, I also have a lot of like clients that uh, that do get it, you know, and they're really interested in so tell me what I can do. Like, what do you recommend as a supplement? What do you recommend? What do you do every day? So recently I've started to find time for Instagram <laughs> to promote more every day in my life. What I do, I've got a three-year-old and an eight month old. So I'm a busy mom as well. So I want to try and show busy moms tips and tricks on how to get that nutrition into your body is simply like a, a smoothie in the morning. Um, and that's such fast and easy and it's drinking on the go as you're dropping the kid baby to daycare. And, you know, so I, I try and give them all these tips on ways that we can find for us to give ourselves that nutrition, which is so vital. Yes. Yeah. And if we're not filling ourselves up, we're usually emptying the cup and yes. <laughs> we need to find a way to to keep it full enough that we're able to not only do all of the things that we're doing, but also full enough that we're actually still nourishing ourselves and we're not just wasting what we're filling up on everything that we're excreting. Um, so yeah, another great point. So I'm curious, what if you kind of transitioned with, you know, if you're doing the, the skin stuff and you want, you were doing IHP, were there challenges like along the way that you found with either, you know, studying or trying to incorporate both um, or challenges maybe from moving like from massage to esthetician? Did you encounter any like obstacles in your path to kind of where you are now? Um, I can say, yes. I mean, like 
every time we start a, a new business and a new venture, there's always obstacles. Um, for me personally, the biggest obstacle in my life was um, moving around with my husband in the military. So um, we, we uh, move around every three years. And that's really difficult for me to grow my business. But as you say, everything happens for you. My business has now become 50% virtual. So all of the clients that I've taken care of in the past, like um, I, I take care of a lot of military wives and military wives have the same problem. Like, oh, I just found you and now I have to leave again. And I'm like, well, I'm still here. I, I can take care of you virtually um, because I can recommend skincare that's suited for your skin and I can recommend nutrition and I can give you all the advice and we can have virtual conversations about your skin. And also if you find somebody else local, I can recommend, you know, what I think would be good for your skin. So I'm not losing my clients. And, um, I'd say that's probably the biggest obstacle, everything else. Um, what I've learned has not really been an obstacle. I think it's been an absolute blessing. I, I know and knew the direction that I wanted to go in and I, I'm excited. So, so, so excited to go in this direction that I'm going in now with the integrative health practitioner. Cause I think it's going to set my business aside to, wow, this is the missing factor. It's a hundred percent. The missing factor, the skincare business is an amazing industry to be in. And if you can help improve somebody's acne that they are so insecure about, and I love that feeling of seeing my clients just getting the results that they want and thinking, wow, yes, I helped that girl put a smile on her face and she can now like put her hair back and walk outside with clearer skin, no makeup on. And it is a, it's a, it's a circle, you know, cause when they have acne, they put that bad makeup on and more toxins on and then they feel depressed and they feel stressed. And it's so getting them on the good cycle rather than the bad cycle is the best thing. So I guess the answer is, yeah, the only obstacle is the military. Yeah. <laughs> they, but, yeah. But even that, I mean, even that you've kind of spun into uh, seeing it as a blessing and yes. having to yes. then make yourself, you know, somewhat available virtually has probably allowed you to reach past clients. And now you're currently reaching, you know, the clients where you are now in, in, yes. your, um, in your place, but you're able to still serve uh, and work with old clients too. So you're yeah. right. It can, yeah. It can be um, just as much of a blessing as it is an obstacle. And I, I want to go back to something that you just said, cause I think it's, you know, so interesting that you bring up like that vicious cycle, right? is mm -hmm. I always say to clients, really, no matter what we're talking about, like we have to break, break the cycle somewhere, right? Like, yes. yes, maybe the trauma is causing stress and the stress is causing the hormones to be out of balance. But when the hormones are out of balance, then your mood's out of balance and you can't deal with the trauma, right? And you have to find like your way in, where's the window? We can break it here. We can break it there. Um, and oftentimes, you know, we use supplementation and things like, you know, to, to get the symptoms to alleviate a little bit so that the stress calms down, right? And yes. for you, maybe it's that you use some of your topical stuff and you see a little bit of results on the skin. And then that helps to bring the internal stress down and you can work on the internal stuff at the same time. But you're right. It can be, especially with acne. Um, and, and I agree oh, yeah. because there's nothing, nothing better than knowing like you have improved a woman's self-esteem. I'm like getting emotional because like, you can like you feel you as women, we all know what it's like to have a day where we like feel crummy about ourselves or we don't, you know, yes. and to have somebody who's able to step in and say, I got this. I know what's going to help. I'm going to help you. Mm -hmm. You're going to then, you know, feel empowered to help yourself and knowing that you've helped a woman's self-esteem and she just shows up as a brighter Burden yes. Herself in the, I mean, You're giving me goosebumps. <laughs> Honestly, I, I, th this is the reason why I do what I do. I, I absolutely love, love to see a young girl, a young girl, just like sometimes walking into the room with the hair in front of her face like this and so timid and insecure and, and, and embarrassed about her skin and, and, and just saying to her, look, it's okay. I got you. We're going to go on a skincare journey together. I'm not going to give you overnight results. And it's about expectations. Also, I'm not giving you an overnight result, but I'm going to put you on the journey together with me. We're going to work together. And it's just having that support. 
and, and reminders and checking up on them. How, how are you going today? Did you have a nice salad? Did you eat some good nutrition? How's that skincare going for you? And it's just, it's just nice. It is. We all need it. We all need that extra support in life as women, as mothers, as pe- we are the, the ones who are the busiest. We have, we have businesses and we have um, kids to take care of and it's just nonstop. So it's nice for all of us women, honestly, to completely empower each other and support each other. I love it. Yes. Yeah. And yeah, I can't agree more. I think it's, yeah, it's why we do what we do. And I think that's why yes. IHP is such a tight knit, amazing community because it's a bunch of women wanting to serve and empower and help other women. Yes. There's men too. And they're doing their job to, to do some of that. But I think yes. like the mama bear instinct in all of us, like our genetic DNA of being women and our just need to want to help and serve and, 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 you know, be there for, for other women is I think what makes our job and our, our place in this world. So unique. Absolutely. I totally agree. I totally agree. Um, all right. So I usually ask for like book recommendations, but I think everybody who's listening is probably like, okay, her skin's beautiful. She's glowing. (laughs) We know all about the inside. What do you have any like favorite topical things that, um, you like are your go-tos or like, are you um, a huge mask believer? Do you think serums Mm -hmm. are, and I'm sure it's a little bit of all of it. Um, I'm a green beauty junkie and I love, I mean, just about any serum. Everything. (laughs) Um, Yes. What are your kind of go to some of your external tips and tricks? Um, okay. So I'll go, I'll tell you the things that I love, love. I love, uh, so the two brands that I use in my skincare clinic, I use Derma Visuals. Derma Visuals is one of the super greenest skincare that you can ever come across. It, um, it's all organic or inorganic. So it it has everything. It has, um, what I mostly love about Dermavigils is the actives. So it has, um, like hyaluronic acid. It has uh, rosehip oil. Like every single active is all just that one active. So I can mix I get my own little chemist in my room. And what I do on most treatments is I mix different ingredients into either a gel or a mask. And I put that on in treatment room. Mm -hmm. That's what I use during most of my facials. And I use Environ skincare. So Environ skincare has been around for 30 years. It, um, it's based around vitamin A. So it's the vitamins. So your your skin cells need vitamin A. It's kind of like oxygen for the skin Um, to function properly. It's like a normalizing um, ingredient to help keep the skin healthy. Um, They have like a really nice anti-pollution range full of antioxidants to help to fight free radical damage on the skin. Um, I'm a big fan of masks and I'm a big fan of natural oils, like, um, keeping the skin nice and hydrated. Again, it just depends on the client and what kind of skin type that they have. So I love using an integrative approach on that as well. Um, making sure that they have a consultation with the, the, the expert and telling them exactly what's suited for their skin type and concern, because sometimes an oil is not good for other skins, you know? Um, yeah, so I do, they're, they're two of my favorite. Um, and I, I, one of my favorite masks at at the moment that I use in almost every client, it's the mask from Dermavigils and that has vitamin A, C, E and the panthenol. Um, I just love it for the colder months. It's really rich and hydrating. And I use that a lot underneath my red light and treatment as well. So it's pumping the vitamins in on top and then pumping the vitamins in internally also. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I couldn't agree more. And so I want to go back to something else that you mentioned too, because I, I think it's worth mentioning because I'm actually a true believer in this and um, a woman who's worked on my skin previously also, you know, is always like, don't do anything abrasive. Like you don't yes. want to. Yes. So I think a lot of when people think of exfoliating, they mm-hmm. think of, you know, like those walnut scrubs and stuff that like actually quote unquote scrubs their face. Um, and you mentioned like enzyme exfoliation. Yes. So will yes. you kind of just, t- you know, touch upon this for our listeners who are interested in the difference between the two? Absolutely. So I, I'm a therapist um, that does not believe in removing 
the, anything from the outer layer of the skin. So it's actually so important that you don't. And I always use the analogy of the roof tiles of your home. So you want to keep the roof tiles of your home all together intact, really comfortably. So the bottom layers of your home are all kept in good condition. When we start to chip away at the roof tiles of our home, like with scrubs and chemical peels and acids, now you can use acids sometimes, but you got to know what acid your skin would like and what it needs. But it's there's different types of acids. So I don't really recommend scrubs. I don't recommend chemical peels every week. I don't even recommend dermabrasion. Um, I don't recommend anything abrasive. I don't think it's needed. And especially not with acne. Like acne is an infection on the skin that does not need to be messed with. Most people, and I think this is the biggest misconception in skin care, is that I feel this is what I see a lot in my, in my clinic, that young girls, they think they have acne and they go online and they go acne skincare and they buy and purchase an acne skincare brand. The acne skincare brand has salicylic acid, glycolic acid. So does the moisturizer. So does the mask. So what they're doing every single day is they're stripping the natural oils and their acne is actually getting worse over time. When if they just didn't if they just asked a professional and actually asked, Hey, what do I need on my skin? It's not always an acne. In fact, there's only like, I think 2% of the population that are a true oily skin. Most of the oil, most of skins are more on the drier combination side of things where they need hydration. They don't need stripping. Um, one of the other things I would mention that's huge. And a lot of people would say, when I say this to them, Oh, really? Um, wipes like, People are getting wipes and wiping their makeup off with a wipe. Mm -hmm. That's stripping the natural oils off of your skin. It's also aging around the eye area because you're just taking all of the natural oils away. When you take the natural oils away, there's no hydration left in the skin. So it starts to wrinkle. And then, you, you know, as I said, the, the roof tiles of your home, the environment gets inside and starts to ruin the bottom layers. And they're like, oh, I can't keep up with the top, put the top back on, fix the top. So the top layer is the most important layer to take care of. Um, and, and impaired barriers are the most common th thing that I see in, in my skincare studio. Yeah. Yeah. And I, before I started seeing the woman that I saw, I was using like a little bit of like a, a scrub and, and I, it was actually making my acne worse. She said like I was ruining the barrier. And so then I had no protection and basically any pollutant that I came in contact with was like yes. infecting my skin, just like you said. Um, and you think, you know, it's, it's no different than the health and wellness field, right? Like supplements and detoxes and cleanses and all these things. They're so cleverly marketed that yes, to like a 19 year old girl, she's like, oh great, I'm going to get, you know, this proactive system. Look at these before and afters. And yes, if you just consulted with somebody who can give you individualized attention, they're able to tell you exactly what your skin needs. Just like a health coach is able to tell you exactly, you know, what your internal system needs based on lab results and whatnot. Um, so always seeking that individualized care, no matter what is so important. Absolutely. I mean, that that's, that's one thing that I hope is growing in the skincare industry because, you know, we go to the dentist when we need our teeth cleaned. We go to the doctor if we're sick, but we don't necessarily pick a skincare therapist or a specialist in that field to help take care of our skin. We have the answers. We know I've studied skin for like 16 years now and I know how to take care of it. So it, trusting in a skincare therapist and, and having that trust on the journey that you're going to go on together is a huge great beginning to what you want to get out of your skin and it's worth the investment. It's really worth it. Yes, of course. And I think we're kind of brainwashed in our society, especially as women, you know, that guilt can come into play of like mm -hmm. a facial is, you know, that's a luxury that's for people who have, you know, X, yes. Y, and Z, or they, you know, if they have extra time or I need to, you know, do this for my kids and I'll do facials when they're older. And, you know, we, we, can get guilted into not putting ourselves first, I think. And skincare is kind of put on this like luxury pedestal. But the truth is, is our skin health is just as important as our internal health, um, you know, when it comes to protecting Absolutely. It, so. Yes. Yes. As I was, we talk again about the cycle, it's definitely it's so important to be taking care of ourselves externally, 
and like emotionally because then you don't all of a sudden as empty and you're a, a hot mess <laughs> you yes. need to yeah you need yes. to take care of it all yeah and I was just I'm um, having a conversation w- with someone about like the you know more psychiatric effects of mm-hmm. aging and when we look in yes. the mirror and we're not taking care of ourselves and we're feeling like oh god I look so old I look so tired you know all the women that just like look they're like I'm a hot mess uh, and that that narrative then can kind of cause internal aging. In my opinion, like we get into this, um, you know, place where we're then feeling old and we're then acting. Yes. And we end up, you know, getting more of that internal, um, you know, replication of what we're seeing on the outside. And so. Absolutely. That's, that's definitely a whole other topic that should be talked about because I do feel like once we start to hit 40 or 50, we think, Oh, I'm getting so old, but it's so young. And nowadays I think that those women in their forties and fifties are only just becoming into their prime, like starting to really feel like it clicks, you know, and I know for myself personally, it clicked when I turned 30 Oh yes, I, I I know it's so important to do things for me, to love me, to really actually take care of yourself. So then you can take care of everybody else, especially when kids come to play. You know? Yes. Yep, absolutely. I remember my mom said, you know, like your prime is in your 40s. And I'm like, foot when I was in my 20s, I'm like, 40s, my God, like <laughs> ancient. And I, I'm 36. And yes. you know, 40s not that far off. And I can totally see what yes. she was talking yes. about because but you also become far more confident you become far you more able to kind of like sit and know yourself and love yourself in a way yes. that you're able to show up in a much more fulfilling way in the world ex- I think. Ex- exactly I totally agree with that yeah yes um all right so if you had any more like tips tricks it doesn't it could be internal external any more little um things that you'd love to share with our listeners when it comes to skin or like internal health and skin together is there anything else that you'd like to Um, leave them with yeah I, I think the biggest one is seek advice from a specialist if you have any skin concerns um listen to your body um, it definitely speaks to you if your skin is has something on there like it's showing signs of aging and acne. It just just ask a professional. Um, make sure to fill your body full of nutrition every single day. I always, as I said at the beginning, make sure that my clients have essential fatty acid supplements. They're so vital for skin health. Um, zinc is also another one, vitamin C, collagen powders, just everything. (laughs) Just, 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 yeah. Taking care of yourself from the inside, um, and on top and also making sure you, you put yourself first and find some time for you, especially moms go find some time for you to go do the things that you want to do because you deserve it. Yes. And no matter how uncomfortable or annoyed it makes everybody else around you. Exactly. I think that, yes. So no uh, guilt, guilt free. Yes. It has to be guilt free. You got to go away. Even if you're just going for a walk, just do it. Just get out of the house. Yep. <laughs> yeah, I agree. Um, thank you so much. Please share with our listeners, the ones that might be um, lucky enough to live somewhere near, <laughs> near your, um, <laughs> your office and who could see you in person, share with us your business name again. And then uh, also where people can find you on social media. Um, so yes, I'm on Instagram and Facebook and my page is healthy skin within one. That's the number one. And then my website, I'm, I'm just updating at the moment cause I'm bringing in the health coaching, um, side of things very soon. Um, my website is healthy skin within one.com. Okay, great. And your, the name of your business. Yep. That's it. It's, it's oh, healthy, healthy skin, skin within. within. Perfect. Healthy skin okay. within. Yeah. Yeah. It says that everything in the name, healthy skin within. <laughs> Great. Okay. That's wonderful. Thank you so much for being a guest on the integrative health coach success podcast and sharing all your skin and stress and, um, you know, women wisdom with, with all of us. I really appreciate it. Thank you so much for having me. It's such a pleasure. Thank you so much, Julia. Of course. Our pleasure. Thanks, Rachel. We'll be in touch soon. Take care. Bye-bye. You too. Bye-bye.